Hello, welcome to Teaching with Smartboard. Dave, what episode are we at? We are on episode number three. And myself and uh, my esteemed colleague here, David Slacky, I'm Scott Miller, are going to join you every week. Uh, this is our third episode, as we said. Uh, Dave, what are you circling there? We have our website here that you can get some resources, and as well as you can get um, these templates that are in Smartboard Notebook. Dave, uh, now episode three. This isn't like some kind of Star Wars thing where you know we're doing prequels or anything like that. We actually have two other episodes. We have two other episodes. If you go to this website or you go to our podcasting uh, website, you can uh, catch those. So we um, we're located. Uh, oh, oh boy, I, <laughs> Dave, that doesn't this, quite look like. No, I don't think we're in on the moon. Oh, okay, Dave, where we, where are we? We are in Naperville. I better take this moon out of here. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. All right. We so go. we're just west of Chicago, yeah. uh, and uh, we are uh, at Naperville Central High School in Naperville, Illinois, with District 203. And you can see our email addresses down here at the bottom. Uh, feel free to contact us if you have any comments, questions uh, about anything. Yeah, and Scott, um, Naperville Central has just had a uh, was named what? Oh, uh, with uh, our work that we've done with uh, Smart Technology. Smart Technology has actually named us as a showcase school. Uh, and so we'll actually be up on their website in case anytime you want to come visit and see Smart Boards in action uh, yeah. here at our high school. Well, and, and every math classroom has a Smart Board. That's right? right. That's right. Well, what's on the agenda, Scott? Well, let's see. Uh, like all of our other previous episodes, uh, we have a lesson idea. And we have a smart board tip and a tutorial. Our lesson idea is a memory game, uh, very similar to the memory game that you may have grown up with, uh, with, with cards. Our smart board tip is putting different size covers into the gallery. We'll talk very extensively about uh, uh, what the gallery is and what it can do. And then also to make a new folder in my content to make finding things easier for yourself. Yep. So Dave, why don't we get started with our lesson idea? That's great. We're gonna go jump right into uh, the memory game and we uh, put this up on the screen for the students and we put it up just like this and the student would be uh, picked at random to find the equivalent ratios for instance and uh, the students only allowed to pick two at a time so um, these are click and reveals these okay. are new to smartboard so this isn't this sort of takes the place of physically picking up a card and turning it over right right and we used to do memory game where you moved um, the uh, the square, but now we can just click and reveal. It's kind of nice. So you have a student pick them at random. We always like to do that. Um, and so, for instance, the the student might pick that, and they get twelve knights. And then the student might pick something else like that, thirteen thirds. And they have to find that if they're equivalent ratios or not. Those are not. So they. Uh, click them back and they go back down and, and sit down. Students have to remember where those are. Sometimes if you have more squares you could also have them um, you could also have them write down where the squares are. Sometimes that's kind of nice. Sure, sure. And you have another student that comes up and tries to pick two more. The only thing is if they do get a match we try to have a, n a different student pick the next match. Usually okay. in okay. matching memory game you would continue on if you found a match right right where you collect the cards and then it ga becomes right. a game of competition but this isn't really no we're not competing we're just trying to to engage the students in a little bit of remembering where things are and and also um, coming up here and just trying to to interact with the smart board so okay now uh, again this just doesn't have to be uh, ratios this could also be uh, terminology, right. uh, definitions, right. and a figure or something else like that. So it's not just restricted to something that like we're looking at here. Right, or equations. We have you know an equation and an answer, possibly in math. I have another example here that is not a math example, but okay. this case, um, this is with presidents, pre presidents in the quote. Okay. So and it can be as easy as this. It's just six items, three matches. And so the students would, you know, come up and, um, uh, you know, match these up. And, and it's kind of nice. Uh, believe it or not, it takes a while for the students to catch where the matches are and to remember them. And, you know, you can imagine 
them trying to piece together this over and over in their mind, and it's a, a real good memory device. Okay. Now, could you also use it, Dave, in terms of, uh, you know, we mentioned not just with uh, a math example here, we have an example from, uh, from history. Is it also possible that you could introduce a lesson this way, where you have students match things, and then how does that lead into what the lesson is for the day? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great lead in. You, you know, it kind of just sees where they stand, and and then they can kind of see what they need to know to uh, learn the lesson. Okay. Now, Dave, how about building these particular uh, items here? All right, that's a great question, Scott. Is I have some directions here that you guys can see on your own. Um, I'm just going to explain a little bit. I have a template here. If you've downloaded this from our website, you can just go here and um, you'd go to this whatever color you want. I'm gonna just going to pick yellow. And let's say we want this square to have x equals 3. And then maybe this uh, square, 5x equals 15. So now, well, Dave, that's all in good, but now it's on top of the card. I mean, aren't the kids going to know what the answers are? Yeah, anyway? yeah, it doesn't done too too good to uh, click and reveal here. Oh, but you know what we can do is we can now go and click on it, click on this little triangle up here, and look at order. See order? It says to send to the back. Okay. So now it goes behind there, and when you click, you can see it. When you unclick, it's gone. Okay, so to just to review again, you press the, uh, around where that object right, is. Right, right. And then that you can kind of see the highlight come up in this triangle there. We go down to order, just like in Word. Okay. And then we want to send it to back. Okay. And um, actually, what's kind of nice is if you click all of the items okay. with using control, you can send them all back at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's, if you want to use that template, you know, this has a few more squares in it, but it's kind of nice um, as an option. Okay. So that kind of leads us to our tutorial, Scott. Okay. We're going to make a new folder in my content. Now, Dave, why, why do you want to do that? I mean, in terms of why, where is this folder located in terms of my content? And why in the world would we want to do this? Yeah, it's a good question because uh, what we do in SmartBoard a lot is, is use the same things over and over. So my content is in Gallery. So we go to Gallery. And under in Gallery, you can see my content right here. And we just open my content. And now you can see all of the folders that I have right in here. And what we want to do is click on this triangle again and it says new folder so we want to make a new folder you'll see a new folder come up and I'm gonna write in here click and reveal because we're gonna put some click and reveal um, content in here so you can see right there we've made the click and reveal so this is made a new folder and so now, you know, I'll just give you an idea, Scott, what I have in my content. I have a timer. I have a few timers with different times on it. Okay. And I have directions and different graphs, all kinds of different things that I use over and over again. So click and reveal. Now is a new folder in there, and we can just drag in stuff, whatever we want, and put it right in there. Okay. So that kind of leads us in to our next item, which is actually... Putting some these, of those items. Yeah, we'll put right some into of these. The folder. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, Dave, in essence, then it uh, it makes your teaching experience much more seamless in the classroom. In other words, you know where these items are located. You're able to access them. You're able to build your lesson if you need to, and then also to use it uh, in your teaching. Yes. Yeah, and you know, it's it's just a convenience. It's a convenience thing, but. We have these different sizes um, because sometimes when you're doing a smart board item, you have, you'll have need for this size, mm -hmm. and sometimes a square, and sometimes a larger rectangle. So if we go back to that page that we were looking at, 
where you know we were talking about today's tutorial making a new folder which you did mm -hmm. then we again you said go to the gallery go to the gallery right and then go to that new folder that we made which happens to be our click and reveal yep so we're there and then all I have to do then is take this particular item and yep. drag it yeah. over to click and reveal and then release exactly right and now so from there we probably want to name this okay and that I'm just gonna go down there and you can see I just highlighted it sure and let's just call this small square click and reveal okay so uh, now whenever you go in here you'll know this is small square because the next time we'll put in the once you put in the big square okay and you can see you can't really tell the difference between the small square and the big square when you get in there not too much difference. Not too much difference. Okay. But again, you said uh, go ahead and hit that text box that we got and then now call it to medium square. Medium square, sure. So you get the idea. We, we can name these. And now if we bring up a new, um, new page, then I'll – I just clicked it, Scott. Okay. And, oh, there we go. Okay, so I bring up, and then I can just drag out this anytime I want, and click on it, and it then it's click and reveal. Now, Dave, there's two ways then that we can actually replicate these particular items. Is that right? We could drag, keep continually dragging, or yeah, right. A feature that we learned uh, from a previous episode is to do what? Is it cloning? Is that yeah? Right? Oh yeah, we oh, can clone. That's right. Clone. That's right. So uh, we can clone it. So there it goes again. Okay. And um, Scott, you know, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking that there's there's three types of people. There are in this world. Yeah, there's three types of people. There's the people that can count, and the people that can't count. <laughs> oh, that's good, Dave. That's yeah, good. That's, that's good. good. That's right. Yeah. So let's just uh, take a look, uh, Scott, at what we've done today. Okay. All right, so uh, we started out with a lesson idea of the memory game, uh, very similar to what you know, all of us grew up with, with cards, but I said we're doing it electronically. And we have templates then that you can download to your own notebook file to use. Then we moved on to putting different size covers into the gallery. Uh, but before we did that, we looked at making a new folder in my content so that we can access these particular items very easily. Uh, we could just put them all into one huge folder into the gallery, but it'd be more harder to access. Right, right. Uh, and so once we find things that are useful, we want to make sure that we can put them in a place that's organized and easy to work with and make our teaching more seamless. That's right. Yeah. Now, Dave, I do have, you know, one other question that I, I got from a teacher from another department. Okay. Um, this particular teacher, you know, I, I thought this was just kind of interesting because this... Uh, teacher was asking, you know, hey, to this particular student, you know, why didn't you take this particular word and why didn't you translate it? Okay. And the student said, I did. I took that word and I moved it three inches to the right and two inches down. I did translate it. <laughs> that's good. All right. Our non-math people might not get that I translation know, know. joke, but that's good. That's, that's very good. excellent. Okay. Scott, um, one more thing is that um, we haven't talked about anything about us. I wondered, you know, you uh, actually live with four uh, women, right? That's right. That's right. I have uh, three daughters uh, and a, a wonderful wife, and uh, they're all in elementary school. Um, so I usually, you know, uh, with three, you know, four women in the house, I usually end up, you know, shaving outside in the bird bath or something else like That's that. Right. But, uh, it's a wonderful experience. How about yourself, Dave? Yeah, I have a wonderful wife, and I have three children. One's in college, Kelly, and uh, Jamie's here at the high school with us. And okay. So she's uh, she's actually in your class. I yes, didn't know if is. you knew that. Yes, Oh, I, She is? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, okay. Just, yeah. Oh, that's Her name is that... Jamie Slag. Jamie Slag. Okay. okay. Right. And then uh, I have Carl. He's, uh, he's in junior high. So thanks for being with us today. Mm -hmm. And feel free again to contact us with email. Also, feel free to go to that website for all the resources and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Okay.